We have a connection card that you probably received on your way in. You can get that filled out. Let us know if you have any prayer requests. Help us understand how to get to know you better. But we are so excited that you're here, and we're going to bring Pastor Brad up. So I had to tell you, I had a, a confession and, and, uh, and the proclamation of forgiveness all prepared. But after that song, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Do you live that way? When are you dropping your head, shaking your head? Where does that dark cloud come over you and you forget? No one stops the Lord Almighty. His kingdom has come, it will come, and we win. Our confession of sin is too often we don't say yes. But rather we, the noise and the hurry and, and the shadows and the brokenness, we forget. And right there, God meets us, not to whack us upside the head, but to point us to the cross and the empty tomb. And he says, I've won. And that power from which I raised myself from the dead, I will raise you from this dark place so you can live again knowing that no one can stop the Lord Almighty. And it's him with whom you walk. This I declare to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. Yes.
time in our service that we'll take just a minute to look around, see if you see any new faces, any faces of friends, say hello to some people around you. We're going to take just a minute. And after this, we're going to have our kids coming up for our children's message. So once you've taken some time to greet some people, send your kids on up, and then you are welcome to have a seat. The young people, the children come forward. Great. And you guys got to kind of turn around so you can see me. Does that make sense? Because I, I want to talk to you. Yeah. Are you going to do it that way? Okay, you can do it that way. <laughs> come on up. You can come on up. Yeah. So we remember a lot of stuff. huh? Like if I were to hold this up and say to you, what color is that? What would you tell me? What color is it? Green. Green. I'm glad you remember that. It would have spoiled the whole thing. Yeah. How about this color? You remember what color that is? Yellow. All right. How about this color? Remember what it is? Blue. What color is this? I mean, what color? What number is this? Blue. What number is this? Blue. What number is this? Five. You know, they didn't know it over there. They said I made a terrible five. But anyway, yeah, it's a five. We remember lots of stuff. Like, if you were going down the street, would you know which house was yours? Don't they all look the same? But you'd still know which house is yours, right? And, you know, so, and, and we learn the address of our house later on. We learn telephone numbers and we learn names, all those things. We remember all those things, right? In the Bible, in, in, in the, there, there's a song, and there's lots of songs, in the, in, and, and, the, and the one who wrote the song is saying, God, I will remember all the things you did. I'm going to always remember them. Every, I'm going to remember them every day. And another place he says, I'm going to remember them every morning, first thing in the morning. And another place he says, I'm going to remember them at night. Before I close my eyes, I'm going to remember them. That way you never forget it, right? By the way, what did, what did God do for us finally? What did Jesus do? He yeah. He loved us so much he died on the cross. So, so we're forgiven and loved. We're his own dear children. But what happened three days later? He rose from the dead. And so this God that loves us so much, this Jesus who died for us, he's, he's alive. And he wants us to remember that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I'm with you always. Every moment of every day, he says, remember. So, you know, I told you the guy in the Bible, he wrote a song so he could remember. We're going to do a, a song, just a little bit of it. And I want you to sing it to yourself when you first wake up in the morning and when you go to sleep at night. And it goes like this. And you guys probably know this. It's a little bit of the song. It's yes. So that's the sign language for less. Yes. Would you do that? Yes. And then Jesus. The nails went into his hands because he loved us so much on the cross, right? So yes, Jesus loves me. Can you do that? Here we go. Yes, Jesus loves me me. All right, so it goes, you guys know this. You want to sing with me? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. You know, a lot of people think that we outgrow that song. I sing it every day to myself. And so I'm going to invite you to remember every morning you open your eyes, just sing that much. And you can do the signs with it too. And before you go to sleep, it's real simple, huh? To remember. Let's do it one more time. Ready? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Remember, because it's awesome stuff. God loves you. He's always with you. He wants us to remember. See you guys next time. Uh, we got, you can follow Jen out the door. Uh, we've also got junior high and high school. We gotta, we'll listen to the sermon in, uh, in, in the Hope Garage. Uh, and we'll have a song.
guys can be seated. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great to have you with us. Uh, my name is Brad. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, whether here in person or, or online, we give thanks to God for you, and we thank you for spending this time with us. And we're excited because we know that God's Spirit, uh, through through His words, we're, is going to give touch each of our hearts and give us His gifts. Um, and, and I pray that you might receive that and know that and have great joy today. So, so we give thanks to God for you. We're glad you're here. We we pray for you. Um, uh, being challenged, that's, that's uh, our, our focus uh, today. La- last week, um, we took some time, and, and some of you here and some of you weren't, I'm sure, but we took some time because we were focusing on prayer, uh, and we had um, myself and Pastor Nathan and Deacon Ron and, and, uh, and our prayer uh, partners, I, I think uh, Dottie was one of them over here, uh, and we, we invited you to come forward to pray, uh, even as we invited you, especially uh, if, if uh, your, your mom and dad and your kids are out and you have quiet time, whoa, you get to talk to each other, right? And to connect in prayer. We, and, and I heard so many um, comments to me through this week that, that that was a good thing. All those things were good things. And, and I have to tell you that, that um, it was this experience for me of being in solitude with God. Now, it may seem crazy, right? We had the band going. We had all you guys around us. Uh, people were coming one by one. But... But when you're praying for someone, you're so focused on your connection with God and praying for that person, what you just heard, right? And it's almost like you shut out everything around you. There's a lot for me to shut out on Sunday mornings. I mean, you saw that last week when I forgot about the offering, you know, I fouled that one up, yeah. But, but it was pretty easy because this person was the most important thing And I had to take that person to the throne of God. And so for me, it was this experience of of knowing solitude with God in those minutes. And I have to tell you, after the service, um, I just felt like I was walking on air. And I couldn't figure it out for a while. You know, how about that? The pastor can't figure it out. Um, But I realized it was because the very thing, I was realized it driving home last Sunday, the very thing we're going to talk about today, I, and I don't know about y'all, but, but I experienced it during that time, and it's so, it's such a gift, and it's so empowering, and it so connects you in who you are and who God is and what that means for you. So, so that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about seeking solitude. I remember growing up, uh, my brother and I shared a room um, just off the kitchen and, and the door never worked in the room, right? It was an old house in L.A., right? And, I mean, it was, it was, you never could close it, so there was always a crack open. And my mom worked uh, 3 to 11. She was a nurse, and my dad got up at, like, at 4.30 in the morning to go to work at a factory. And yet, she would get home at probably be 11.30, close to midnight, and he would wake up, and they would talk in the kitchen. And I knew that. Why? Because my door was cracked open all the time, right? And they would talk in these soft tones, and there was something special about it. And, and and as I I grew up, I realized what was special is that they were they were connected to each other. It was it was this solitude we're talking about. That's what God wants for each of us with Himself. And when we can experience that, awesome things happen in our lives. If you're new today, uh, welcome to the Being Challenge and. And if, if you're coming back, uh, I'll, I'll welcome you again to the Being Challenge. Well, welcome back, right? It's, it's this 40-day adventure that we're on um, to kind of grow in our identity in Jesus' being. That, that's what that means. I got this shirt on that says, be like Jesus, be like Jesus, be like Jesus. The whole idea is the, my identity is hidden with Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says, right? Uh, and, 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 that, uh, and we see Jesus as, as, our, as our great example. Remember, he was always true God. That's why when he suffered and died on the cross, that it could pay for all of our sins, right? Because he was true God, but he was also true man. And so when, when, the, when the voice of the Father said, this is my beloved son at his baptism, he goes out in the desert, and the first thing Satan does is tempt him and says, if you are the son of God, right? Trying to attack his being. Has that ever happened to you? You ever doubt who you are or drift from it? You see, Jesus, he certainly gives us this example in, in, these, in these habits that we're looking at that he practiced, but, but it was more than that. I want you to see that. He was practicing them because 
it was a blessing to him as a true man. Go ahead, put that up for the next one. The, the keystone habits that he practiced committing to community, and we see that right away, right? He starts his ministry. What's the first thing he does? Does he go hang his hat up at Hebrew University and say, okay, anybody wants to take my class? You see if you want to follow me? Is that what he said? No, he went to the, to the people and said, come follow me. Peter, James, John, come, come, come follow me. Come. He gathered his disciples. He began his ministry in community. He committed to it. He did life with them. And we see him, the only story we have of him as a boy, he's in the temple at 12 years old, and, and he's listening to the teachers, the, the professors of the Bible, right? He's listening to them, and he's having a conversation with them. They were amazed at what he knew. Why? Because he studied. He was in that word, and he was learning. And he prioritized prayer. I love what Pastor Nathan said last week. Uh, we, we think of priorities. We put a plural on it, but that didn't happen until the 1900s. Priority meant only one thing, right? Because if you have more than one, you have none. So we see Jesus prioritizing prayer throughout the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, I would challenge you, go ahead and read one of those books this week. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, read Mark. He's the shortest one. Yeah, re read Mark and see if you don't. I challenge you to see whether Jesus is praying or not. It was his priority. Everything went to God in prayer. But don't believe me. Ch check me out. Read Mark. Just a few chapters. And today we're going to talk about Jesus seeking solitude. It's an example to us, but it is also his way of life because it solidified him in who he was. This is my beloved son. And it starts the moment after his baptism, he goes out into the wilderness. And he's alone with God. Of course, Satan's there to tempt him, but he's alone with God. In the book of Mark, uh, the very first chapter, it, it's so amazing to me. Jesus starts, he's baptized, goes out in the desert, comes back, cho chooses his disciples. The very next day, it's kind of a busy day for him. He, uh, he preaches in the synagogue. It's a Sabbath. He preaches in the synagogue. He goes, has lunch at Peter's house. And, oh, by the way, he heals his mother-in-law. Peter's mother, boy, wasn't that neat for Peter? I bet that earned him a lot of points, right? Jesus, he was, I, Jesus he's cool, man. He, he even, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that my mother-in-law. Anyway, we won't go there. But I'll tell you what, he earned points with his mother-in-law, right? I mean, Jesus healed her. But then it says that night... All of the sick folks and all the demon-possessed folks, they were all brought to the house. Tell me, how late you think he worked? You think it was easy work? Or you think he really had to be focused, man? He must have been beat by the end of the night. I don't know about you, but I'd sleep in the next day. Not Jesus. Look what it says here. Very early the next morning... While it was still dark, Jesus got up. I wish I could tell you I do that all the time. He was amazing. Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I gotta find some quiet time, my father. I need to talk to him, and I need to hear his voice. And this wasn't a, a one-time deal, huh? It was a way of life with him. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. If Jesus needed this, how much more do we Jesus found out about John the Baptist's death, that, that uh, King Herod uh, beheaded him. It says he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Do you think he just went there to be alone? Or to be alone with his father? I remember... Um, my daughter was in high school, and she, we were in Denver, and she, so we had a basement, and, she, and her bedroom was in the basement. I came home one day, and Janie said, um, she said, you know, uh, Brad, Sarah's really struggling with something. Uh, she wanted to talk about it, but I bet she'll talk to you. Why don't you go downstairs? You need to do that. 
So I went down there, and I, I gently knocked on her door. I said, honey, you doing okay? And she opened the door, and she kind of had tears, you know, and, and uh, I said, how you doing? You want to touch? She said, no, Daddy, I'm all right. I just prayed about it. She went to that place and was alone with God. You ever done that? When the tears of life overwhelm you? That's what Jesus did. When he's going to make a big decision, who is he going to call to be the 12 disciples? He prays all night. He goes out to a mountainside and prays all night. Do you do that when you've got to make a big decision? Or do you think, oh, I don't want to presume on God. I mean, you know, hey, uh, you know, he's supposed, I'm supposed to be my own brain. No, no, no. He wants us to connect with him. I call it Christian clarity that he gives us. I'm not going to tell you. He's not, most of us, he doesn't speak with a bullhorn. But somehow through this, he gives us wisdom and clarity in the decisions we're making. We don't have to go it alone. We're not meant to. We were made to be happy and whole only in a relationship with God. And when Jesus came, he connects us to God brand new because what sin does is isolate us. And he says, come spend some time with me. He withdrew about a stone, so this was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was going to go the way of the cross. He was sweating blood, and he put a little space between the disciples who, yeah, he wanted with him, but he still needed to be alone with the Father. Do you think we're any different? Now, through all this, go ahead. I don't want you to feel as if we're banging you on the head. <laughs> as if it's a big mallet, should be doing this, should be doing this. This is a gift. This is, I love this passage from Matthew. Jesus says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace grace to live in this relationship. I remember uh, I, my, my brother introduced me to, to Janie, who would become my wife, right? And we, and we, we connected, so I asked her out. And, and the, the first night, we were, the first date, we were going to go to a movie, and the movie we liked was at a drive-in theater. And the, just the way it worked out, I, the night before, I had to study and, and take a, a, a midterm uh, at, at college, at Cal State Fullerton, and then I worked in a grocery store, and I went into work, and they made me work a double shift. And so I get off of work, and I, and I, 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 I go pick up Jess. I got, I, I, I got to pick her up, or I got, we, I got a date. So, so we get to the, to the drive-in movie theater, and, and we get all parked, and within five minutes, I'm asleep. <laughs> Jane told me that didn't work. I mean, she told me really strongly that didn't work, right? That's not what relationship is about. And, and the next day, I, I, we went down to Laguna Beach, uh, I love it down there, and we went to a restaurant, and we, and we connected. It was just awesome, and, and, I, and so I'm thinking here, I don't want this night to end, because this is really cool, and I say, let's go for dessert somewhere. And so we went someplace for dessert, and I'm thinking after dessert, you know, I don't really want this time to end, I'm really enjoying this time here with this girl. And I said, well, let's go for coffee somewhere now, okay. And so we closed the, the, that, that cafe, there. the third one we went to, we closed it, why? Because that's what relationship is all about. Being with one another. Intentionally setting aside time. Being focused. And it's such a gift of grace. And that's what God would give us in Jesus as we know him as our Heavenly Father to enter into this rhythm of grace to know his presence and to intentionally seek out that presence. Why? Because there's so much noise around us and, and there, there's so much hurry in our lives. With the first day, I didn't do anything wrong, right? Had to take the midterm, had to study for it, had to work the double shift, didn't want to lose my job. Screwed up relationship, though, pretty bad. In our lives, where do we need to find that quiet time with God where the, the hurry and the busyness and the noise 
isn't there. I, I experienced that in prayer last week. Where can you intentionally find that moment of time to be with God? It's powerful stuff. For any relationship to become truly great, there must be time spent together with no distractions. Again, this isn't a mallet, a hammer on your head. This would be a gift of God's grace to you. So there's three points I'm going to make. These were, by the way, in, in, in the book that, that uh, we're giving away, if you don't have one, we have, we have a few left at the, at the guest table. You can grab one. Uh, and I hope you'll keep up those readings. But if not, we're not, we're, please don't drag yourself over the coals or give up or whatever. Just do, do what you can, right? And, and try to be committed and focused to do those things. Because one of the things I noticed with all these habits is it's, they're all action verbs. It's all a response to who God is in our lives, right? And, and, and so, as, as it's, and we look to grow in those things, every single one of us, that's what this is all about. Not, not to put us in a place of despair, but to, to help us take a step of growing in all these habits. So the, the, I want to make these three points about seeking solitude. Solitude is not about being alone, but being alone with God. I, my, my senior year in high school, I, um, I learned how to scuba dive. And I, uh, the guy, a friend of mine named Jim, I was part of his family. He was part of mine. It was one of those things. And so I'd go over there anytime I wanted. They had a pool. And so sometimes I wanted to be all alone. I would throw the scuba tank in the pool and go sit on the bottom and breathe for about a half hour, right? And unless you saw the bubbles, you had no idea I was there. I was alone. We're not talking about being alone here. We're talking about spending time with God. There's a difference. It really isn't healthy to be alone, is it? We weren't made to be alone, but we were made to be with God. God says to us, come near to me, and I will come near to you. Intentionally find those times to push out the hurry and noise and see what I will do. This last week, I, I got an email from a friend of mine, and uh, and he's been going through the book with us, and and uh, and he was working ahead with with this idea of seeking solitude. And he said, you know, I I am um, I taken a step back with that, and because of the busyness all around me, his situation. And he says, um, I, I've now bought some speakers uh, that that blocks out all the sound. And so, for a few minutes every day, I, I put on Christian music and just sit there and be with God. And he says, it's like connecting with an old friend. It's the most amazing thing. It's not about being alone. It's about being alone with God. Second thing is, solitude is not about clearing our minds, but filling our minds with God. Jesus told a story uh, about this guy who had a, a demon, a, a spirit, a demon spirit within possession, and, and he left, and he left this guy, I don't know why, but he left this guy, right, and, the, and so the guy didn't have the, the demon anymore, he was free, right, and, and the spirit was roaming all over the earth, uh, and, and then he came back to the guy because, because he, there was no place he could find to be, and when he came back, it says, he, he found his mind uh, just kind of swept clean, there, there was nothing there, right? Well, if there's nothing there, there's a vacuum. And so Jesus says the demon grabbed a bunch of buddies, and they, now, now they filled them up with a bunch of demons. Why? Because there was a vacuum. There was nothing there. Solitude is not about clearing our minds. It's, that, that's the idea of, of Eastern thought, right? So there's nothing there. That's a dangerous place. We're called to fill our minds with God. By the way, I, I had to laugh at this because... One of the things I've kind of taken some pride in, I, I read a long time ago that, that guys, as compared, to, as compared to gals, we have a nothing place in our brain that we can go to. So us, us guys can do this real easy. And I always thought, man, this is cool, right? Because, because when you talk to gals, they, they look at you and they say, yeah, we don't have that place. 
And it's true. I read this article. It's a true thing, right? I'll tell you what, guys. That's a real dangerous place to be in sometimes. That nothing place. We're called to fill our minds with God. And in that, we have freedom. That is pretty funny, though, huh? <laughs> Philippians 4. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, think how powerful these words are in our world right now. We live in a pretty broken, dark place, don't we? Uncertainty, violence, bloodshed, wars, all kinds of darkness. And, and, and if we're not careful, we think it's like the song we began with, right? Right? Jesus Christ rules. He's the king. And, and we forget that. We think darkness rules. It says here, no, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Fill your mind with these things. How do you do that? You find time to be with God, to focus on him. Set your minds on things above not on earthly things. You know, a lot of people, they, they somehow think that, that uh, this, this world of matter isn't, isn't spiritual. That's baloney. God made this world. And there will be a new heavens and a new earth. And I think it's going to be kind of earthy, guys. And he made our minds. Uh, spiritual stuff isn't just like way out there. It's right here because God's spirit, the Bible says he fills us. We are the temple of God both together and individually. His spirit fills us so that our minds can focus on the things of God and live in that reality. As we find times of solitude with God, his spirit can work these things in us, can whisper to our hearts. Be still and know that I'm God. This, this knowing is a, it's not just head knowledge here, but the knowledge of our very soul, the very essence of our being. The uh, Greek word is gnosko. Be still and know God. And it's the thing of grace. A thing of grace. Finally, solitude will not make you less productive. I'm more productive. I think this is so important. Um, go ahead, put the next one up so we can get it all together. Yeah, solitude brings focus in a loud, distracting world. You know, we're always tempted to think, well, if I take time to do that, uh, I, I, I won't get this other stuff done. I don't have time to stop and be with God. I got too much stuff to do. I open my eyes in the morning, and I'm immediately filled with all the stuff I have to do. There was a famous Christian lived about 500 years ago. He said, there's no way I would ever get anything done if I didn't spend, I, I think it was like three hours of God in, with, in prayer, right? I ain't that good, to be honest. I'm the other way. I got a lot of stuff to do today. But if we find that time to be with God, we are so much more productive See, when I uh, worked in a grocery store, um, uh, I was in college, and, and lots of times I worked night crews. And, and what I found was there were some guys, some uh, bosses that they, they would they, they would ma make you work through the breaks that you were supposed to get. And that was fine. I was a kid. I didn't care. And, and so you know we'd work. But but what I found was after a while, the guys that said no, we're going to take. I think it was after two or three hours, you got a ten minute break. And and the leader that would have us do that, we would get so much more done. When we take time to rest in God and to work from our rest, we get so much more done. Jesus said, "Remain." this is from John, not Hebrews. Jesus said, remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. How do we do that? By intentionally being with him. He'll bring great stuff from you. Because it's not our strength, but his. Finally, from Hebrews, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So we're doing something here. We're running the race of life, right? 
How do we do that in a way that's going to bring great stuff into our Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. If you've ever um, sprinted, all right, if you've ever competed in sprinting, you know you can't put your head down because all your energy goes down. You have to know where you're going and have it out there. And everything has to be going forward. That's the picture here. We keep our eyes on Jesus. How do we do that? We find time to be alone with him. So our eyes are always on him. And we live our eyes with, with the prize in front of us. To be and live and, and have our being in Jesus. And it's the gift of grace. It's not meant to be a hammer on our heads. The key to productivity is abiding in God, not in doubling down on your own strength. I, I often wonder what the ancient peoples thought of, um, of, of uh, Israel when God said, you're going to not work on Saturday. All the other peoples must have thought they were nuts. How can they ever survive with taking a day off, man? What the heck's the matter with them? Don't they know that, that, that you got her stuff to do? But God said, no, you need to stop and be with me. He says the same thing to us. Not just one day, but time in every day. Stop and be with me. And you're good. And you'll, through me, you're great. You get so much more done. <laughs> so God's whispers to us. This was uh, in the book... Uh, but I, I loved it. Uh, we take time and we hear the voice of God in our lives. Uh, things like, I love you. I, I need to hear that. I am who you say I am, right? I love you. I forgive you. I need to hear that one. I choose you. He chooses us to be his people, and as his people, he gives us the meaning and purpose of bringing his light into our world. And we've already won. I'm coming back for you. And in so many other ways, he whispers to our hearts. It's like in the Old Testament with Elijah, he was in the, he, he had had this great victory, but now it looked like he was going to lose his life, and, and God brought him to a desert place, a wilderness. No one else is there. And he brings him out of the cave, and there's this great fire, and there's this great earthquake, right? And this great wind. But God comes to him in a whisper. And he whispers all these things to his heart, just as he would do with us when we come into his presence as one of his beloved in time set apart to be with him. Simply by being with God, putting these habits in your life, especially solitude, spending time with God alone, your doing will be so much greater. When we give over the things of this world to him, when we spend time in his presence, he fills our minds with more of him and who we are in him, empowering us to be more productive than we ever imagined. Gift of God's grace to you. Being challenged, seeking solitude. Lord, may you lead each of us to find times of solitude with you, and may you do great things in our lives. Amen. We stand. I believe we're going to sing our creed today. This I believe.
pray uh, this morning, uh, but this is how I'd like to start. Um, um, Becca, you can't walk away. You got to come here. Sorry. No, it's all right. Um, Becca is, uh, we found out a couple weeks ago, she got offered a wonderful job. Uh, and so uh, she uh, is, is leaving uh, our employ, I guess you'd say. Uh, and and it, it, I was so happy for her. She explained the job, and she'll be a place where she can show her love to the people there. Uh, but she has served us so well, and we give thanks to God for her. She's not leaving. She's going to sing for us. And she's going to be in job in, in, involved in all kinds of ministry. We've already talked about that. It's going to free her to be involved in children's ministry and the like. Uh, but what I'd like to do is this. You know, would you all raise your hands? And, and uh, what this symbolizes is that we pray God's spirit on her. Okay, so please, everyone, you know, where the Bible says that where we agree on something, God's going to do it. So let, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your name for the gift that Becca has been to us. Um, for everything that she is and everything that she's accomplished, we, we praise your name. And, and, and we thank you, Lord, that she's still going to be around here blessing us with her gifts and with her smile and with her faith and with her heart. And, Lord, we pray that, that your blessing would be on her as she begins this new chapter in her life. Um, we pray that, that great things will happen and that, and that she will be a blessing to those around her, that she will bring the love of Jesus into this new employee. We pray in your name and all God's people say, amen. And let's give thanks to God for her. <laughs> And that wasn't rehearsed, so I feel kind of bad. I kind of jumped her with it, but that, that's her. So this morning in the first service, um, Chuck did the, the service I, I preached, and, and he put together some wonderful... I don't usually do this, but I, I wanted to share some of these prayers with you in our prayer time. So after each one, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you'll say, hear our prayer, okay? God of love, we begin with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you for choosing us as your holy people, your royal priesthood. Thank you for your blessings showered upon us and all your people. May your name be exalted in all the earth. May all people call you Lord and Father. May the world wonder at your power, your wisdom, and your grace and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, the people of God, pour out your spirit upon us and your whole people that we may serve you and reveal your kingdom in our daily lives. But by the power of your spirit, we would transform our corner of the world and reveal you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, give us eyes to see where you are working and calling us to make a difference for your kingdom beyond these walls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who are sick and hurting, Stephen and Julie and Chris and Darren and Sally. Ben, Barbara, Cheryl, uh, and little David. Dearest Jesus, you are um, the great physician. We pray that your hand of healing and protection uh, would be over these for whom we pray and those we have in our hearts. And we pray that you would show us how we are meant to be your touch of love with those who are hurting around us. Lord, in your, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for the family of Jan. Uh, we don't need to pray for Jan. She's with the Lord. Um, but we pray for her family in, in the face of, of her being taken to heaven. Uh, dearest Jesus, you are the resurrection and life. Lord, we pray that with this family, you might show yourself just as with the family of Lazarus, the one who weeps with us, but the one also who gives us victory in your empty tomb. We pray, Lord, that they might know you as the compassionate Lord midst of that compassion, in the midst of those tears that you weep with them, uh, also the victory that Jan has in you. And we pray even in the midst of those tears, they might not despair, but turn in joy to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Creator God, help us to, uh, may we find rest and solitude in you, in time with you, in relationship with you. We pray that you would help us to genuinely seek you every day as we set aside time to rest and visit with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As God's people, we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Offering moment, I thought I would share with you, uh, you know, we, um, we sponsor the golf tournament for Everyone Matters Ministry, and, and it's a win uh, just from the fact we bring, over, we bring 100 people together, uh, and, they, and, and they know about the ministry, Everyone Matters Ministry, and they're able to support it, and they're able to, to grow with one another. But on top of that, uh, we, the, the tournament netted, uh, I think it was something like $20,000, uh, $24,000 or something, and... Um, and, and that was from your seed money. We we uh, we seeded that tournament with with ten thousand dollars. Nothing could have taken place without your offerings, and and uh, we were able to bring hope uh, to to this community and and to this organization that 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 literally uh, connects with families, putting them in trailers so that they're not on the street, and giving them resources uh, so that they can find housing on their own. Over, over a couple of years. Um, wonderful group, uh, and you're all a part of that, uh, and that's what we're a part of with our offering. So would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, open our eyes. Um, give us hope in, in, in the king that always rules and that we're about his ruling. Give us a certainty that what we do in you is never done in vain, and so open our hearts and minds uh, so that we joyously give to your work. Uh, Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. Three ways to give uh, online uh, with our phones, mobile and, and in person. You could do, use the boxes that are on the walls as you leave today, or, or you can mail it in. Uh, and if not in this uh, Christian venue, uh, uh, look to give somewhere. Jesus said, wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So this is something that's, that he doesn't really need our stuff, but, but he wants us. And, and I think somehow there's, in this mystery, he set it up. So that, so that this can draw us closer to him as we bring offerings to him, whether it's here or in another place. Okay, uh, we have just real quick announcements. Uh, we, we have Feed My Starving Children, 400,000 meals. That's the goal, 400,000 meals. Uh, and, and it's October 20th, 22nd. I think we have like 20 slots yet to sign up for. So they're on the table to, on the left. It's an awesome thing to be a part of. Uh, so you can sign up there. Uh, next... Um, yeah, we have tr Trunk or Treat. You can sign up at the guest table or online, uh, at, not, not just to be a part of it, but we, I know that we need some, tr we need some trunks yet. So uh, uh, we need folks that decorate, and we'll give you stuff to decorate, but de decorate your trunks and give away cans. It's kind of a, kind of a good deal. You know, it's kind of fun to uh, see smiles of kids. So anyway, that's, that's Trunk or Treat. Uh, next one, um, uh, this is happening. We wanted to. We, we're going to hit this every Sunday for a while because we do, because it's hard to do something different on a Sunday. But November 13th, we're having one combined service at 9:30, and then we're having this this congregation meeting that celebrates everything that God has done and look forward to the vision that He's given us. Uh, uh, we'll have child care provided. It's going to be a great time. That's on uh, November 13th. Uh, yeah, and then the last thing I wanted to, to make sure and mention is that the, the governing board is take, has a survey that they would like all of you to take, and, and there's some, uh, there, there's some uh, there are folks out in the narthex uh, in the third space that will help you do that as you leave today. Is that good? Did I remember this? Okay, very good. All right. Receive now the blessing of our Lord. Um, may you always know the presence of God the Father who smiles on you. May you know the Son who wants to do life with you. And may you know the comfort of the Spirit that gently calls you into his presence every day. Amen. Am I on? Yeah. I'm going to make sure and mention uh, uh, we, we've, got, we've got two prayers for you, uh, uh, and, and um, we have Dottie and we have Bonnie. Uh, raise your hand, Bonnie. We have Dottie. So, so why am I doing this? Because they're real people, yeah. and they really can connect with you. And so if you want to be prayed for, they're here for you today. <laughs>